Hello and welcome again to the Burning World Ministry. And we continue this week with this wonderful Psalm 119. And we're starting once again another stanza. In this case, stanza number eight. And as you can see, this is not a 100 meter race, uh, this is a marathon. And I want to encourage you so you we can run together. And as we continue, it is my prayer that the Lord continues to shape our way of thinking, that He also continues to direct our steps to the very center of His will, and, of course, of our Christian life as well. One of the main reasons why we want to go verse by verse, especially in this particular psalm, is because we want to cut this food into smaller portions, which will allow us to better digest this wonderful food, this wonderful truth called Psalm 119. And I want to start, as on other occasions, reading the whole stanza, and then we can focus only on the first two verses. So we read Psalm 119 from verses 57 to 64. So let's dive into it. Um, this is verse 57. It says, The Lord is my portion I have promised to keep your words. I sought your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your word. I considered my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I hurried and did not delay to keep your commandments. The snares of the wicked have surrounded me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion to all those who fear you and to those who keep your precepts. The earth is full of your goodness. Lord, teach me your statutes. Mm. So one of um, the things I would like to emphasize about this beautiful stanza is that three times I don't know if you noticed, but three times it tells us about keeping his commandments. And here, I want to persuade you uh, of the importance of keeping the word of God in your heart. In fact, 21 times this Hebrew word, shamar, is used only in this Psalm 119. And the psalmist begins with this declaration of obedience. This is a public statement. And this statement sets the pace for the rest of the stanza and for us, so that we know that all the rest of the stanza rest on this first line. However, this stanza begins at a much higher level. Before the psalmist expresses such a commitment, it begins with his relationship with the Lord. All commitments, all obedience uh, flows from our relationship with the Lord. Every effort to put commitments, promises, oath first is just another form of legalism and self-righteousness. In other words, there is no way to keep God's word and to make statements of commitments uh, that are separate from a relationship with the Lord. Uh, the Lord Jesus says in uh, The Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches, the one who remains in me, and I in him bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The Lord is my portion. This is what is driving this promise of obedience. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, Any other thing that we want to do apart from our relationship with the Lord, it will be done in the flesh. There's really no point to emphasize. Our emphasis, it has to be always in our relationship with the Lord. And the rest will flow from it. He, the Hebrew word used for portion, is the same that was used in the book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 20. It says, Then the Lord says, uh, said to Aaron, You shall have no inheritance in their land, nor own any portions among them. I am your portion, and your inheritance among the sons of Israel. As you 
probably already know, Israel entered the promised land under the leadership of Joshua. Joshua came after Moses, right? And then divided the land among the different tribes. When it came to the Levites, God told them they will not inherit any land. But for them, there was something much better. I will be the, your portion, says the Lord, uh, and, and your inheritance. In practice, the Levites and their families lived off the tithes and offerings uh, brought by the families of Israel, to whom they served and ministered. But the main point here is that the, the, uh, the God's children, uh, having God in their lives, was having everything. In the same way the Apostle Paul will write later regarding the gift of God to men, his only son in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 32, uh, it says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Also, the book of Psalm, chapter 16, verse 2 and 5, says the following. Very interesting. It says, I said to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have nothing good besides you. And verse 5 says, The Lord is my portion of my inheritance and my cup. The psalmist, he declare, declares that um, God is his portion, his inheritance and his best possession. What better could have, um, uh, can we have but God himself? And he What he really means is that there is nothing or no one really who can really satisfy your heart or mind like God. We really must realize that this satisfaction that the psalmist experiences is based on the fact that God has come into his life through his word. So he, uh, he can say that God is his portion as he comes to meet him in his word. And he decides to walk in it and keep it. Then motivated, motivated by the grace of God, then he promises to keep his word. Isn't it uh, that uh, the desire of all those who have been born again? In fact, it is the evidence of the new birth, right? It is not that uh, we have to keep the uh, Lord's word as if um, we were, uh, if, if it were something that we do to please someone. But rather, uh, we keep uh, Lord's word as a result of this deep desire inside of us. And he put new desires in a new heart. Uh, and, and this heart deeply desires to keep the words of the Lord, which are, they heal me, they give me hope, and we know that he gave us righteousness, he saved me, right? And it says in verse 58, it says, I sought your favor with all my heart. The truth is that this verse is a result of everything that we've spoken about already. If God is our portion and all that my heart and soul need, then I will seek him with all my heart. He comes to the conclusion that if he's going to be able to keep God's word, it will only happen by the grace of that God alone can provide. Simply put, it is not something that will happen just because of discipline or willpower, but because of the grace that only God can give us. The psalmist, he tells us that he, is, um, he desperately needs God's favor and presence in order to follow the Lord. And he says later, he says, Be gracious to me according to your word. He, this petition for grace is never going to be based on a right or merit, but only according to God's promises. What he is saying uh, is in few words, sustain me with your grace to be able to live your word. Strengthen me with your word to follow your word. And this is a prayer that God wants to answer because if you notice, This verse says, according to your word. In a nutshell, 
what the psalmist brings in prayer, God has already promised to fulfill. And he, the psalmist, makes this request, which uh, he has already brought to God on a number of occasions in this psalm. Because he recognizes his vulnerability and his fragility, which makes his dependence on God's mercy even more evident. And I want to encourage you, dear friend or brother, to pray in this way. This type of prayer is very powerful. Uh, call on the Lord and remind Him of His Word. But above all that, humble yourself before Him because He is God and He is worthy. So ask the Lord for His favor. Ask the Lord for His presence and grace which will sustain you and strengthen you to overcome all kinds of situations, to overcome temptation, to overcome circumstances. This is a prayer that really we all need to learn as this is a prayer made by a mature believer before the throne of Christ. Is the Lord your portion? Is that the kind of thing that you desire? Are you still desiring things that are temporary? Do you have a void in your heart that nothing and no one can fill? Can you say like the psalmist, I sought your favor with all my heart. When you know God through his word, he can satisfy your soul. He can quench your thirst. Today, you can raise your voice to heaven and say to God, be gracious to me according to your word. This is the prayer that the, the Lord will hear and answer according to his promise, his word. May the Lord be gracious to you, and it will be until next week. <laughs>